guys, today I'm filming a video all about my preeclampsia symptoms. And I know a lot of you already know this, but our baby girl Quinn was born last year at 33 weeks, very unexpectedly because I had a severe preeclampsia. I have filmed an entire birth story video already. If you wanna know the details of what went down and what happened exactly when she was born. I was also vlogging the day that we went into the hospital unexpectedly and literally stayed there until she was born, which is still crazy that any of it happened that way. Now she's about to turn 11 months in six days. So it's been quite a while. Even in those two videos, I'm pretty sure I had said that I didn't have any visible symptoms of preeclampsia. And at the time, we didn't think I did, but over all these months, quite a few things have come back to our memory where Eric and I are like, that was definitely a symptom of preeclampsia, but we just didn't know it at the time. I'm not a doctor or a nurse or an expert, but I'm someone that had the disease and I just wanna share my experience in case there's anyone else out there that is maybe searching this because you think you might have it or you don't know or you have one of these symptoms and most preeclampsia symptoms are regular pregnancy symptoms. So they're things that normal people would just have throughout pregnancy, which is what I had thought the whole time anytime one of these things would happen. Like I said, looking back, there were quite a few things that happened during my pregnancy that I just thought were normal pregnancy symptoms and I didn't even Google it or look it up because I had no reason to. It was stuff that I kind of expected to happen. I really knew nothing about preeclampsia. I had heard the word, but I probably couldn't have even told you what it was. It was my first pregnancy. I didn't know anybody that had preeclampsia. I don't think anyone that I like follow has preeclampsia or had preeclampsia. And obviously, unless something is seriously wrong, I'm not gonna Google like what can go wrong during pregnancy and freak myself out if I don't need to. So it's not something that I was really aware of. So I'm just hoping this video makes people aware of it that are like me and don't even really know about it. I knew it existed, had no idea what it was, and definitely did not think that I had it or had it severely. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen of what preeclampsia is so you can just read it because I think that's better than me trying to explain it myself. This is off of mayoclinic.org, so I would assume this would be very accurate and everything that this says is exactly everything that my doctors told me. All the nurses explained to us so many times and it's all the same information I got once I got admitted to the hospital. I'm just gonna start out with symptoms that I had that I didn't know were preeclampsia symptoms. So the first thing is swelling. I remember I literally vlogged the first day in my pregnancy when I could tell that I had swelling and it was in my hands and I think it was in my feet. It wasn't super bad, but it was definitely like a little uncomfortable and I could tell if I looked at my hands and my feet, but I don't think anybody else could tell. Like I remember showing Eric and he could barely tell. He agreed with me that I definitely was a little swollen, but it was something that I could feel a lot more than you could see. I thought I would vlog because this morning when I woke up, my hands and my feet felt swollen. And if you've been following along my pregnancy, you'd know I like, have barely had any symptoms the whole time, except for like a few at the beginning. My hands and feet don't look swollen, like they look totally normal, but I could just tell when I woke up, like my rings were pretty tight and they're not like tingly, like they're falling asleep, but my hands and feet just feel, I don't know, they don't feel normal and I know that's a pregnancy symptom. Someone actually commented on that video and said that I should probably go to the doctor or something because it could be preeclampsia and I remember reading the comment and just kind of passing by like, that's definitely not what it is. Every pregnant person gets swelling and maybe every pregnant person doesn't, but obviously that's probably one of the most common pregnancy symptoms ever and most people don't have preeclampsia. So obviously I just thought like, I'm just, swollen like a pregnant person. I definitely wasn't assuming that I had a disease because my fingers were a little bit swollen. The swelling went away the next day, I think, but then throughout the next few days or weeks or whatever, it would come back and then it would go away. And looking back, it was like a little worse every time I would get it. It didn't necessarily look worse, but it definitely was a little more painful. So I did bring it up to my doctor when I had my next appointment and she looked at my feet and she didn't really seem concerned or anything. My feet didn't even look that much different. So we just moved on because it was definitely just like a regular pregnancy symptom. And I had for sure seen pregnant people way more swollen than me and they didn't have preeclampsia. It was just swelling. So I didn't really have any reason to think anything more of it than just swelling. Moving on, I had totally forgotten about this, but I had a super bad headache one night. I've never struggled with headaches or migraines or anything like that, so it was out of the ordinary, but like I've been saying, you kind of just expect different things to happen to your body when you're pregnant, and I had heard of headaches being a thing that people get when they're pregnant, so once again, I just thought, normal pregnancy symptom. I didn't really want to do anything that whole night. I just laid on the couch, I put like a cold rag over my face, and 
Went to bed that night. It was like a pretty bad headache. I went to bed and it was gone the next morning. So didn't think anything else of it. So far, those are two symptoms that I had that were clear preeclampsia signs, but I had no idea because they're also pregnancy symptoms. This is where it starts to get scary. Eric and I really wanted to go on a baby moon. So at this point I was like 30 weeks, maybe 31 weeks. We had already looked up how long is it safe for you to fly when you're pregnant? Like how many weeks can you be? And people were saying, I flew at 34 weeks, 33 weeks, like everything about flying at that point in pregnancy seemed 100% fine. Like we didn't see any dangerous risks about it really, as far as just flying while pregnant. Obviously if you have other things going on like preeclampsia, then you should not fly, but we didn't know I had that. I also barely had any bad pregnancy symptoms the whole time. Like my pregnancy was very easy compared to what I've heard other people talk about theirs being like. I definitely had some days that I felt gross and didn't want to do anything, didn't have an appetite appetite, all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I never threw up. I never had like super bad things like I've heard other people talk about. So because of those reasons also, I thought I just had like a great healthy pregnancy. I go to my next doctor's appointment. Everything's going perfectly normal like it always does. They take my blood pressure. She said it was a little bit high, which they had never said that before, but she said it's a little high, but we'll take it again right before you leave because it might just be since you just walked in and sat down. We go on with the appointment and we ask my doctor if it's fine for us to fly. It's just gonna be a quick trip, like three days in Florida and the flight isn't super long. It was like under three hours, I think. And we're totally expecting her to say, yes, that's fine because everything we looked up said that it's fine to fly at like 32 weeks or 31 weeks. Well, to our surprise, she recommended to us not to go on the trip. She said that I shouldn't fly and that if we wanted to go, we should drive. We were super confused by that because her reasons that I shouldn't fly were because when you're pregnant, you're big and it's uncomfortable to sit in the seat the whole time. You get hot easily. And there was one other thing, but it was something simple like that. And I hadn't had any of those symptoms at all. Even though I was 30 weeks or maybe even over 30 weeks at that point, I had stayed super small my whole pregnancy. Like I barely got a baby bump. So I definitely wasn't gonna be uncomfortable riding in the plane. I didn't really struggle with like getting super hot and I know that's something that people do. And then whatever the other thing she said was, it was also like something like that that could be a thing that pregnant people struggle with, but I didn't have it and it wasn't something that was like a big concern. We were just confused because she suggested that we drive, which would be over 12 hours for us and that would be uncomfortable not riding in a plane for two and a half hours I just want to clarify that nothing she said had to do with preeclampsia nothing she said had to do with me having anything going on in my body anything wrong with me the reason she said that I shouldn't fly was that I would be uncomfortable and that I would get hot and neither of those were a concern to me whatsoever so Eric and I decided to go on the trip anyway we go on our trip the plane ride was totally fine the only thing that was uncomfortable for me the entire time was that my feet got super swollen. I remember them being really, really swollen at the airport. Like at this point, they were definitely swollen where you could kind of tell by looking at them that they were swollen, but I still had ankles. It wasn't like my feet were blown up, but like my toes were like thicker. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like my feet were just a little thicker and they hurt super bad. That was the biggest issue with it was that my feet just hurt really bad. I remember in the airport scooting my suitcase in front of my feet, like the carry-on and just like putting my feet up and even that barely Really, really helped. There was nobody in the seat next to me on the flight home, so I just like put my legs up there. That didn't really help. And while we were on the trip, we were walking down this boardwalk and it was probably filthy dirty, but I literally took my shoes off because my feet hurt so bad. And then halfway back on the boardwalk, I had to just sit down because I literally could not walk on my feet anymore because they hurt so bad. I still thought it was pregnancy swelling. I've heard of this happening to people. Also, I forgot to mention that I had been having a little bit of back pain leading up to this, but it wasn't anything crazy, but some days it would hurt worse than others. The pain in my feet was definitely the worst part. So I had even gone to TJ Maxx like before this and I got a little massage foot roller ball and I would just like roll it on my feet on the floor sometimes because I was hoping it would help. It really didn't help that much, which looking back, it wasn't just sore feet. So that's why a massage ball didn't help. But one more thing that happened on our baby moon that we didn't realize until months later is that there was one day I was vlogging the entire baby moon. I literally have a baby moon video up and it's like almost scary to watch it knowing like how bad I was without knowing. There was one day when we went out to this like Rosemary and Alice Beach area and we were in a super pretty area so we wanted to take pictures of ourselves. So we set up our tripod and our camera and 
we kept taking pictures and I would go look at it and I hated the pictures. And usually, even if I like don't like how my hair looks or whatever, I'm like, okay, it's fine. But I would just look at the picture and I literally felt so ugly. And it was because I didn't look like myself. At the time, I didn't even realize that though. I just thought that I looked super ugly that day and I was like really sad. I even started crying and I told Eric, I was like, I'm never taking a picture of myself again. It was like a really hard moment for me. I was probably emotional anyway, because I was pregnant. We never did anything with those pictures. We just left them on the computer. And then probably like four months later, we went back and we were looking through stuff from our baby moon, just like for fun. And we opened up those pictures for the first time since the baby moon and I was so swollen. So many people when they have preeclampsia, their swelling happens like overnight or super fast. Like they'll wake up and their nose will be huge or their lips will literally be like blown up. And that never happened to me. The swelling happened so gradually that we didn't even notice it. We were so surprised the first time we opened those pictures after all that time when we looked at them and both of us like remembered the day. We remembered me crying, saying that I felt so ugly and we were like, I was so swollen. Like no wonder I didn't look like myself. But even with that swelling, I still didn't look like a typical preeclampsia patient because I wasn't as swollen as they usually are. The day we got back from our baby moon, that day in the airport was by far like one of the worst. My feet were hurting so, so bad in the airport. And we came home that night and I just like wasn't feeling good at all. I felt like everything just hurt. I figured it was from a day of traveling. Even though the flight wasn't super long, you're still like pulling suitcases, carrying bags, walking a lot. So I just thought that's why I felt not the greatest. My back hurt super bad, my feet hurt. My hands and feet were kind of swollen. When we got home that night, I just wanted to like take a bath. So I go to fill up the bathtub. I'm pretty sure I even like put a bath bomb in there and we had no hot water. It was February and we had been gone from our house for a few days, so none of the hot water had been used. So I went to fill up my bath and there was nothing. This night was literally the most miserable up until the night that Quinn was actually born because I remember when I couldn't take the bath, I came out on the couch, Eric and I were trying to watch a movie and like I could not even focus. My back was hurting so bad, my feet were hurting, and I still didn't think that anything more than pregnancy symptoms were wrong because once again, it's common for your feet to hurt, it's common for your back to hurt, and it's common for you to be swollen. So why would I think that it's anything more than that when I had literally heard so many people have those same symptoms and they were fine? I think it was the next day, most of those symptoms had all gone away. I felt a lot better the next morning. And then that night we were watching an online birth class. I did not want to go into like actual birthing classes. So we were just watching one online. I started getting a bad headache again and it was even worse this time. This is something that I had totally forgotten about once again, once I was in the hospital and everything was happening. Like this didn't even cross my mind at that point. I remember we didn't even finish the birth class that night cause I couldn't even like listen to it. I couldn't open my eyes. I just laid on the couch, put a rag over my face and just like dealt with the headache. The next morning it was gone. So moving forward, I think it was like just about two weeks later because it had been almost two weeks since my last doctor's appointment. We had gone on our trip. We had come home, been home a few days. I go to my next doctor's appointment and this is where everything just exploded in our faces. Everything we had no idea was going on in my body. This is the day that I was vlogging that I got sent to the hospital. So I go in, everything's happening like normal. Go to the bathroom in the cup. They take my blood pressure. My blood pressure was super high. That had never happened before, but the last appointment they had taken it and it was a little bit high and then they had never ended up taking it again when they were going to. Then they get the results back from when I went to the bathroom in the cup and there was protein in my urine. That's two symptoms. I had the swelling and then I ended up having so many other symptoms too that are internal that we had no idea about from the outside. There were also symptoms that I didn't have like blurred vision and I don't remember what else, but that's one thing that they kept asking me if I had that I never had. Those were all my symptoms that I had up until I got sent to the hospital hospital that I just had no idea about. Long story short, they sent me straight to the hospital from there. I was in denial that anything was wrong because I still felt normal. And three days later, I have my baby at 33 weeks. Like I said, if you want to know the details of her birth and the birth story, everything that went down once we got to the hospital, you can watch my hospital vlog or the birth story video that I filmed because I do go into a lot more detail there. But yeah, I hope this was helpful and enlightened people on preeclampsia. And if you have any of these symptoms, do not just think that they are regular pregnancy symptoms because even though they are, 
it could be more than that. Every pregnancy from here on out for me will be high risk. And now I know to look for the symptoms, look for the signs, even though it's hard and it will be hard next time if I don't have visible symptoms on the outside again. Part of me is nervous to even upload this because I already know there's gonna be people commenting that I should have known and I should have listened to the doctor and not gone on the trip and I should have done this and I should have done that. At the end of the day, I don't feel like I made any wrong choices we went on the trip because nothing that she said that we shouldn't go applied to me. Obviously, if I knew I had preeclampsia, I would not have gone. But getting too hot on the plane and being too big were not concerns of mine and those were her reasons for me not going. Also, she literally suggested that I drive 12 hours in the car instead of flying. So it's not like she said I shouldn't go on the trip. She said I shouldn't fly on the plane. When I think about it, it's actually terrifying that I was so close to going into HELP syndrome on that plane and had no idea. And if that would have happened, that would have been deadly. So God was definitely watching over us, one million percent. He was protecting us. He knew what was going on the whole time when we had no idea. So we definitely give him every ounce of credit for taking care of us. And I'm also super thankful for my doctor for sending me straight to the hospital that day. She obviously knew her stuff and knew that something was wrong. I hope this was informative and was able to enlighten at least one person on preeclampsia. And please leave any questions in the comments if you have them, or you can always message me on Instagram too. I try to reply to every message. People can be very judgmental about medical situations, even when they're not your own. And and you like to give your opinion. So if you don't have something nice to say, don't bother leaving a comment because I will delete it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if there are other videos that you would like to see me film and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye guys.